Who do Jehovah's Witnesses say uh, is the true shepherd or the good shepherd, according to Jehovah's Witnesses? Uh, well, um, you know, from the biblical standpoint, the Bible informs us that the good shepherd is Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ. It's not a, it's not a human being, that's for sure, you know? Mm. Uh, but from the Bible standpoint, you know, we, we follow what the Bible tells us. Mm -hmm. So from the Bible standpoint, the good shepherd is, you know, in context, it's mentioned a few times in the Bible, it's either Jesus Christ or yeah. it's His Heavenly Father, Jehovah God. That's why we call ourselves Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so that's Jesus' Father. So yes. in, in the biblical context, depending on the context of what's there, that's who we, that's who the, the Bible tells so the Good Shepherd. So are you saying there are two Good Shepherds, Jesus and the Father, or is there one Good Shepherd? So God is known as a shepherd, yeah. yeah. and His Son Jesus is also known as a shepherd. But also, um, ones who are appointed as overseers in the congregations are also considered under shepherds. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of mm -hmm. yeah. So your question is like a, a good shepherd? Are you basing that on the scripture? Are you basing it just on the general? That's kind of a general question, you know. So what prompted the question? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, so I'm a Christian, yeah. sure. right? Um, I read the Bible. Yeah. Uh, when when I read the Bible, like you guys said in John 10. Ah, you're referring to the scripture, okay? Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Oh, sure, yeah. It's good um, to know. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know you. <laughs> No, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I believe I believe the Bible. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I read the Bible uh, for what it says, and I believe what it says. Now, in John 10, uh, Jesus says that He's the Good Shepherd. Okay. Yeah. Can we go there just to quickly yeah, sure. look at it together? Sure. Do you mind, like, Not at all. do you have your phone on you, or? Well, I'll, I'll look up. You'll listen. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. I'll go, I'll go so I'll go to John 10. Uh, hold on. We can start at verse 11. I'll read from verse 11. So Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. So I am the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he has a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And then he continues on, and I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd, one shepherd. Yeah. And then if we go down to verse 27, I don't want to read the whole thing, it's, it's long. If you're very familiar with those, with those verses, you can continue with your thought. In verse 27, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. So, like you said, like Jesus is the good shepherd, and there's one good shepherd, according to the Bible. We agree. Um, yeah. yeah, but when we go to, here's my question to you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd like to hear your opinion. To where you are, I'm going to narrow, yeah. narrow it down. Yeah, tell me what your, what your thought okay, is. Okay, yeah. What you think and why you're asking us and trying to figure sure, it out. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. So, so when I go to Ezekiel 34, the Old Testament, sure. we can go there if you want. Um, sure. Ezekiel 34. We can start again from verse 11. This is the Lord God, Jehovah speaking. Mm -hmm. In verse 11, he why says. You use the name Jehovah. That's interesting. Well, I mean. I'm just curious. You guys use the name Jehovah. Well, yeah, right? but you yeah, freely, most, so most I'm just, people don't. No, uh, most people do not. So, like, you're familiar with us. you're familiar with it. So, I'm just getting your line of reasoning and <laughs> where you're coming and where you're going, bro. You know. Yeah, yeah. Continue. <laughs> I'm not trying to trap you guys. I'm, oh, no, I'm no, just no, I, no, I just no, want to get your very, opinion. I'm you know. I'm telling you that's very interesting. Yes. I take note. Okay. Continue. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Tetragrammaton is no J in the Hebrew. No. So even you know the name Jehovah, it's. Yehovah or yeah, Yahweh, like but Jesus right. is Yeshua. Yeah, Yeshua, same. exactly. Yeah. Jeremiah, Jonah. It's yeah, exactly. That's consistent throughout the Bible. So yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, so in Ezekiel 34, verse 11, I it says, "For thus says the Lord God, or as I did look into the New World Translation, it says, I'm the Sovereign it. Lord Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out." 
Verse 12, as a shepherd seeks out his flock when some of his sheep have been scattered abroad, so will I seek out my sheep and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. Now, I don't want to read the whole thing. I just want to skip to like the key, the highlight verses. Verse 15, it says, I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. So Ezekiel 34 clearly states that God, the Lord God, mm -hmm. Jehovah, mm -hmm. is the good shepherd and, and the sheep are his. Let's, let's continue one more verse in verse 16. I will seek the lost and I will bring them back, sorry, I will bring back the strayed and I will bind up the crippled and I will strengthen the weak and the fat and the strong I will watch over, I will feed them in justice. So what's your thoughts on Ezekiel writing that the Lord God, the one God, the Creator is the Good Shepherd of His flock, He's going to bring them back. And then in John 10, as we read, Jesus takes that title. He says, no, I am the Good Shepherd. So how do you reconcile that? Is that a contradiction according to you? Because it's not to me. No, it's not a contradiction. How do you explain that? Well, you know, as far as explaining, I'm just not sure where you're coming from or why you're asking us this because you, you sort of have something in your mind. Like, mm -hmm, certainly mm -hmm. Jesus did not take anything. He doesn't take anything. Like, he's not, like, overthrowing Jehovah. You know, there's a, there's a balanced relationship between the two, you know? Mm -hmm. He recognized in the scripture many times, he acquiesced, you know, he recognized Jehovah, his authority. But he didn't take anything from, from, from Jehovah by any means, you know? He's been appointed as the good shepherd. God gave him sort of the commission to care for his sheep. So in a simple answer, that would be how I answer that, you know? So I, we certainly don't see a, a contradiction. Where did the Father appoint Jesus as the Good Shepherd? Where did He appoint Him as the Good Shepherd? Because in, in Ezekiel, God says, I'm the Good Shepherd. I will seek out my sheep, you know, bring them from scattered places. And then Jesus comes in John 10 many, many, many years later and says, I'm the good shepherd, I'm the true shepherd. Right. The sheep will hear my voice, no one will snatch them out of my hand. Mm -hmm. I give them eternal life, he says. So I, I believe... Yeah, where, what do you believe? You I, clearly, yeah, you, you, I, I'm, just to be fair, I'm going to explain to you guys what I believe. what it is you believe. We're very good at catching what you're saying. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. So I don't believe the Father is the Son. Okay, okay so don't get me wrong on that. Oh, so okay. that's good to know. I was fine. Yeah, yeah. That's where we were going. So I can see okay. that. I don't believe uh, the Father... Yeah is the son. I believe there are two different persons. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Okay, so the father is the father, just like you two are two different persons, yeah. but you're still human beings. Yeah. So you're one in essence, you're human beings, mm -hmm. but you're two different persons. Okay. So the father is the father, the son is the son. So I just want to clarify that. That's very okay. insightful. Okay, very good. Um, what I believe oh, is, I don't want to go off off track, okay. but I, I, believe, okay, I believe the son is the eternal God. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. And, th and that's fine. That's that's what I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I are think... You, you, does this go so far as the Trinity concept? Is that where you sure, are? Sure, sure. But I don't want to talk about the Trinity right now. No, no, but I'm just wondering, is that what you believe in? Yes. Ah, uh, okay. I believe in the, in the triune nature uh, of God. Trinity, okay. okay. Of course, yes. So you're saying they're distinct, but yeah, so you believe... Exactly. That's what you... I, I can see your reasoning. Okay, we don't. Okay. No, no, that's fine. Yeah. So put the Trinity aside for that's a moment. your question. We don't believe that. No, no, I know you don't believe yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But I just want clarification on how you reconcile Ezekiel 34 and John 10. One says that God is the true shepherd, the, the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. And then the other says, well, he himself, Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. So, the, so you, in the Bible, um, different titles have been assigned to Jehovah and also assigned to Jesus. So it's not just shepherd. For example, Jesus is known as a God. Mm -hmm. A God. Okay. You said earlier, eternal God? Well, I believe he's the God, okay. not a God. See, there's a problem with saying he's a God because then that's polytheism. Do you believe there are two gods? Well, the Bible clearly shows there's many gods. No, no, I'm not talking about demons. Like we, we, we know, you know. But let me just continue. Yeah. So the, the shepherd is a title. Okay, and um, more than one person can have the same title. And in the Bible, Jesus and God have the same title, shepherd. But you have several titles that apply both to Jesus and to Jehovah. And when Jehovah created Jesus, he was the firstborn of all creation. He was the only begotten, meaning 
-hmm. He's the only one that was created by Jehovah alone. So Jesus was unique from all of other creation. And Jehovah bestowed upon Jesus he, uh, many privileges. Mm. He entrusted him uh, with uh, special responsibilities and assignments. So uh, oftentimes when uh, the Bible talks about Jehovah doing something, mm. it's Jesus doing it. Mm. Okay. okay. Can so I just answer your question like Ezekiel, sure. John 10, you know, mm. Good Shepherd. Like in context, if you mm -hmm. want to zoom in on those two scriptures, mm. there's a contradiction, but you know, it has to be taken in context with the rest of the entire Bible as well, mm. not mm. just that, right? So, right. to answer your question, ones that they're both called shepherds, it doesn't mean that one's replaced the other, or just you know, that, that one, if you want to key in what you're specifically doing, those yeah, verses, yeah. it's not enough evidence to, 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 to say that God's a, that Jesus is God by any means because mm. of the title. That would be my answer to you. So can a man or a prophet take the title of Jehovah? Can I say can I say that I'm the first and the last, for example? Because Jesus in Revelation says that Alpha he's the first. No, no, not Alpha and Omega. He says I'm the first and last, the one who died and came back to life. You're referring to Adam and him, comparing in context of that verse refers to Adam. Mm, no, no. So. Uh, I don't want to go off topic. I I just want to narrow down to well, what we're talking about. Sorry, but when you say you don't want to go off topic, but you have to go off topic. Sure, sure. So, Bible, so in Revelation, uh, in Revelation chapter two, verse eight, mm -hmm. it says, "And to the angel of the church in Smyrna, write these things: says the first and the last, who was dead and came to life." So we know the first and last in Isaiah is God. That's titles for God. But here it says that the first and last is the one who was dead and came back to life. And then elsewhere in Revelation 1 verse 17 and 18, it says, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last, I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. So who died and lives and is alive forevermore, Jesus. So you're saying Jesus is God. So well, comparing I'm not saying yeah. anything. I'm asking yeah, you guys, like, I'm, I'm, if, if Jesus takes those titles, yeah. first and the last, yeah. and it's clearly Jesus, because he's the one that died mm -hmm. and is back alive, and he says, I am the first and the last, in multiple places he says that in Revelation. How do you reconcile that? You know, it's not that difficult to reconcile. You know, you can take, you can take a scripture. Sorry, like, what's that? I said, you can take a scripture like that, yeah. and kind of zoom in on I'm the first and last, Jehovah's the first and the last in, in the uh, you know the Hebrew scriptures. Equally, we could stand here all day. Yeah. And I can take another scripture and say Jesus said the Father is greater than I am. I, we That's can swap all easy day. to answer. I, mean, I know it is. So you yeah. have, I, I, clearly yeah. <laughs> I want to say your agenda. Okay, I just want to quickly address the verse that he brought up from John 14:28 about the Father being greater than Jesus. If you read the entire Gospel of John and not take one verse, John 14, 28, out of context, it's very clear and simple to understand that the word greater or mate zone in the Greek is not necessarily speaking about nature or essence or being, but position and ranking. You heard that I said to you, I go away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I go to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. Just like an employer is greater in position and authority than the employee, and just like a commanding officer is greater in role, authority, and rank than a soldier, likewise the father is greater than the son in position and authority. Remember, it is the father who sent the son. Now, just because one is greater than the other in position and rank, that does not mean that the employer is more human than the employee. Both the employer and employee are equal in nature, just like the commander and the soldier are equal in nature. They are both human. The employer or the commander is no more human than the employee and the soldier. In the same way, both the father and the son, being two different persons, are equal in nature. They are both God, one God. And one place in scripture where we see that the Father and the Son are two different persons is in John chapter 8, verse 17. This is one example where Christ speaks about the testimony of two men, of two persons. I am one who bears witness of myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness of me. 
Now, to give another example from the Bible, in Matthew 11, 11, Jesus says of John the Baptist, I tell you the truth, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater mate zone than John the Baptist. Yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. John the Baptist is no more human than anyone else in the kingdom, and everyone else is not less human than John. This is not the point of the word greater. The Father is greater in position than the Son on earth. The Son voluntarily laid aside his divine rights and humbled himself by entering into human flesh. Now, to prove that Jesus is equal in essence, in nature to the Father, in a few verses before, in John 14, Christ says, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. If Christ was just an angel, if Christ was just a prophet, if Christ was just a mere man and not deity, this does not this would not make sense. This is blasphemy. We will come to him. We will make our home with him. Yeah. We do not believe in the truth. You know, and because of context of the whole Bible. We could spend like right. literally a week back and forth again, but with due respect. Sure, sure. I know I appreciate what you're saying. Mm. That's not what we're here to do today. No, I understand. Like, I understand. If you have questions, sure. You want to do it? That's not today. Yeah, yeah no, I understand. That's like a huge conversation. Right, so right. It really narrow it down. It involves involve diving deep into the bottom. Yeah, we're happy to have a conversation. Sure. Like that. And it sure. actually yeah. does involve going off on a lot of things. Yeah, it does. You can't mm. in context. So we're mm -hmm. happy to do that. Today is not the day. Sure, you sure. Know, so Before I leave, can I just ask one more question? You can ask one is more that question. Okay? Do you want us to answer it? Yes, I do, yeah. And you, you have been answering, and I've been listening. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. With respect, yeah. Sure, sure. Um, in Ezekiel 34, uh, continuing from where we left off, I think we left off in verse 16. In verse 17, it says, and you can follow along or you can listen. I can hear you. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, rams and goats. So God is the one who judges between sheep and sheep, rams and goats in verse 20 therefore thus says the Lord God to them behold I I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep verse 22 I will save my flock they shall no longer be a prey and I will judge between sheep and sheep that's Ezekiel 34 and then you're gonna go to you're Matthew. Gonna go to Matthew. Where, it's yes. One. Yeah. Yes. About just, Jesus. Judging Jesus. The sheep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Last three or four times. Just the same. Okay, let me pause the video again. Because they didn't give me a chance to go to Matthew 25 to get the full picture and the full connection, and they just kind of brushed it off, allow me to read a few verses from Matthew 25. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then He, Christ, will sit on the throne of His glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him. And He, again, this is Christ, will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Remember, in Ezekiel 34, it was God who is the shepherd and God who will separate the sheep from sheep and rams from goats. And he, Jesus, will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. So what's Wait, your thoughts on that? Well, it's like all of your questions are exactly the same. Because, like we said, um, Jesus and Jehovah have similar titles. See, like for example, when Abraham entertained three angels, mm -hmm. okay, two left and mm -hmm. one remained. Yes. Well, in that conversation, mm -hmm. it sounds like Je Abraham is, is directly talking to Jehovah, mm -hmm. but it's not, it's just an angel. And the same thing applies with this relationship between Jehovah and Jesus. Jesus himself said, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Now the question is, when did Abraham see Jesus? Well, in Genesis 18, three men appeared to Abraham. Then the Lord, Yahweh in the Hebrew, appeared to him by the terebinth trees of Mamre, as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. In chapter 19, we find out that two were angels, and when we read on in chapter 18, 
we see that one of them is Yahweh. Three men appear to Abraham, but Abraham bows down to the one he calls Adonai, which is my Lord in Hebrew, which is also a common name for God in the Old Testament. This is someone Abraham already recognized when the Lord, Yahweh, appeared to him in other places in Genesis, such as Genesis 12, Genesis 17, Genesis 24. If you just read Genesis chapter 18, the text in Hebrew simply says Yahweh. It is Yahweh himself speaking to Abraham in person. The text does not say an angel is speaking to Abraham. The word Yahweh or Lord, capital L-O-R-D, as we see in English, is what we read. Because of this close bond, mm. Jesus can do things and say that Jehovah is the one that did it. And Jehovah can say that he did it when Jesus himself was actually the one doing it because he was, he was, Jesus was sent by Jehovah to mm -hmm. do it. Just like he sent that angel to talk to Abraham. Well, that angel was God. The one you're referring to in Genesis, two of them left and one of them was Adonai. One of them was God himself. Well, uh, Which means uh, Lord. Again. No, no, it's not, it's not, it's, so, it, if you check the Hebrew, it's, it's Adonai, it's, it's God. So that angel, we can go there if you want. That angel no, materialized. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put you on pause. That's okay, that's okay. That um, I'm sure, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I appreciate, yeah, we can answer that. Sure, put sure. On pause. Thanks for the time okay. you gave us today. No, thank you've you for brilliant. your time. You've been, you've been very, uh, no, no, you guys answer my questions. Flexible. You're good. I like that. <laughs> you know, and and you, you want to do what you do. Good for you, you know? Yeah. There's a, a chasm, you know, we have different yeah. beliefs and so on. Yeah, I understand. Another that. time. That's okay. We can, we yeah, can I appreciate that. Deep dive, you know? Okay, but, sure, yeah, sure. Listen, yeah. With respect, yeah. Okay. You know? All right, thanks. You that guys as well. So good. You guys are very kind. Yeah, no, thank you. Okay, thanks for your time. You on, on your time. Okay, God bless you guys. All right. You as well. Thanks for answering my questions. Yeah, of course, yeah. Okay, yeah, thanks. Thanks. We're switching over now. So okay, okay, that's fine. That's good, yeah. Thanks. Okay.